Colin Bowie from Let's Make It Happen. And I find myself again in a dimly lit studio with Greg, the founder of the Four Mark Supercar Club, for another podcast. Greg, how are you? I'm good, Colin. Thanks for the invite again. Wasn't an invite from me, matey, but um, <laughs> I think... In, uh, Did I make you do it? No, you didn't, as such. I think, would it be fair to say we're back by popular demand? Just a little bit. It did. It did. I read the messages. It was it was well received, and we had no reason not to have another go. So here we are. So here we are again have in the, the evening. Yeah, we've in had our study. It's yeah. like we never were away. No, no. The lights are dim. We got tea and coffee, and and we're having a go. So this time we did ponder what we're going to talk about because obviously mm. the first time round, if you haven't listened to that podcast. Highly recommended that you do, apparently, in the grand scheme of things. Um, That's what the that was a bit of, Yeah, that was a bit of history about the club, how it came about, how you founded it, and how it's grown. And uh, I think the subject we've decided we're going to talk about now, qualifying cars again. So, yeah, we, we very briefly covered a lot of subjects, didn't we, in the last one? It, it, it was deliberately, not rushed, but it was, we wanted to keep the pace and cover a lot, didn't yeah. we? Whereas, I think qualifying cars comes up enough that I think we think that it's going to be an episode worth of yeah. chat about that one subject. Well, it goes without saying it's a key element of the club and whether or not you can be a member. Mm. And, and and that in its own right, uh, as we talked about earlier on, it's, it's, it's a challenge for you, uh, no doubt, when you first put the list together. And for now in the future, when you consider... What gets added or even taken away? There's a question from an original list. Did you ever remove a car? Just get that one out of the way now. Just me. Yeah, no, no. We, 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 we definitely did and we definitely will if there's a particular model that becomes too popular. Ah, OK. So that's a sort of main criteria if it's... And what determines too popular? Go on, expand on that. Um, yeah, I'd like to say that that is a, a very specific number but actually it's more of a feeling um Ooh, feeling yeah it's more than a feel i don't know that song no but, uh, please yeah, stop it, singing I, it um <laughs> <laughs> uh, um yeah i think yeah if some some models i think i mean inevitably uh ferrari enzo of course that's always going to be on the list yeah but the, but some of the some of the not quite so obvious cars may be on the list because they're more rare. Mm. Uh, it, 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 not more rare than an Enzo, but but more rare than other cars, and therefore they've made the list because they might not be a traditional supercar or high-end sports car, but they're sufficiently rare that it kind of works. I'm just frantically trying to think of a really good example. <laughs> Go on. Um, You're on the spotlight, I guess. On. Yeah, I guess... Um, Mustangs are on the list. Yeah, for yeah. example, seen a few. And, yeah, and uh, I mean, I I love Mustangs, so you know that that's sort of, I guess, partly why they're on the list. I like them. Mm. I was worried to have them on the list because I that they they are there's a few of them out there, isn't there? And I was worried that we were going to get inundated with Mustang memberships. Yeah, and we haven't. Mm. And educate me a little bit in 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 the range of Mustangs. Are there many from a point of view of entry level cars, something in the middle, and something which is watch out here it comes. <laughs> yeah, it has to be the current generation, and yeah. it has to be a, a V eight yeah. version for it to be qualifying. And um, as I say, I, I you know I, there's probably a lot of those out there, and mm. and for one reason or another, they're not massively common in the club. So actually, when someone comes out in a Mustang, it you know, I think people were as enthusiastic to see a Mustang as they are at any of the other cars. And, um, yeah, it's a good example that if if we started getting too many, it might be pulled. That's not to say that any existing club members would be uh, hoofed, out. hoofed out. They... Hoofed out is a joke in this somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Mustang horse yeah. joke. So, yes, if too many of any one particular car mm. potentially yeah, pull yeah, that. Yeah. Because first time round, obviously we chatted. I raised the, the 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 nine eleven story. Because again, an amazing well, beautiful it's not, car. It's not a nine eleven story. It's more of a Porsche story. Sorry, yes. Because yes, it I doesn't just yeah, it doesn't affect just the nine eleven. It does 
we do uh, we do have other models okay that qualify uh, for example um, a Boxster yeah or a Cayman yeah are potentially qualifying cars as long as they're a GT car or above yes of course and 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 the car you drive too is, yeah is yeah so the, that's a green tie, machine tie yeah. car yeah yeah, yeah. And but again backs. but again there is a it wasn't when I got my car but they've subsequently brought out a GTS Ooh. um Taycan so the so now the entry point is the GTS Taycan ah, yeah. any members with a GTS yeah oh, cool oh, good um so yeah sticking with the the the, the choice or the the, the the list uh last time we were around we talked about 911 but we talked about a bit about how the list evolved where it is now and the changes that may come about in the future. I mean, is there anything imminent on the radar or agenda with regard to what is a qualifying car? Uh, bar the obvious, I know we talked about EVs and maybe we'll come back to that in a minute or two. Um, there is a genre that is, ooh, that is a slightly, um, shall we say, some contention around it, and that is um, super SUVs. Ah. So I'm, yeah. I'm I'm talking Lamborghini Urus or of course. Aston Martin DBX. Yeah. And then uh, the, the recent events. Ferrari Purison. Oh, yes. Yeah, Is that how course. you say it? No Pure idea. Assange. But another car you mean. <laughs> um, and then our recent event last week, weekend before, um, in Southampton. It's gone right out of my head now. The Harbour Hotel. Thank you very much. My failing brain. Uh, there was a Lotus. Yes, the Electra. That was, I like the look so of that, that car. That spans two controversial Ooh. genres. Uh, one, that it's, an, that it's a, a super sports SUV. I'm not sure if there's an official category for it, but mm. I think of them as like super SUVs. Right. Uh, so A, it's an SUV, and B, it's all electric. Of course it is, yeah. So it yeah. also spans into the EV category, which we do have, which there are not many cars on. No. And, well, let's cover both bases then. As an SUV, is it now on the list or will be? Is it a qualifying car? The Lotus. Yes. Yep, it's on the list. No pressure. No yeah, pressure. It, is, <laughs> it, it is on the list. Okay. Um, I'm not imagining that we're going to get inundated. That's quite a specialist car there. And it's, um, it's when was it launched? Is, is it, I don't we did, know. I we should... did, yeah, we did go to the launch, thanks to our friends at Hendy Lotus. But how long ago was that? That must have been, have been a year ago. Really? Yeah. Didn't get the memo for that one. Well, let's not go there. Um, wow. Yeah, and of course, it's it's an electric car as well, which is another uh, consideration for for the, the, the list. Yeah, we as should talk about EVs at, at some point. But just... Stick just with to, the SUVs. Yeah, let's stick with the SUVs for a minute yeah. because inevitably people say whether they're a club member or a non-club member, should an SUV be in a supercar club? Yeah. What what do you think? Uh, well, well, you know, we we touched on this earlier on, didn't we? It, it is is which aspect of that car is part of the consideration? And for me, the obvious starting point is what's under the bonnet, by virtue of the engine and what it can do. But what if it doesn't have an engine? All right, smarty pants. Um, yes. What is where where do the <laughs> the the electric <laughs> motors? Whenever they stick them next to the wheel, I don't know. Um, but rather than engine or not, let's talk more about its performance and what it does. It is an obvious one, because I can't think beyond this, what it will do not to 60 in, for example. You know, if it's under four seconds, then that's notable. That's a bit quick in the grand scheme of things. So that's a starting point. So isn't performance it? is one ingredient, isn't it? Indeed. It's it's whether we want to admit it or not, that the badge on the bonnet has oh, has absolutely. a part to play, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it from a manufacturer, like we said in our last podcast, is is it from a manufacturer whose core business is sports cars? Yeah. Yeah. Lotus. Is it? So. Yes, it is. I think so, absolutely. They don't really make a mainstream car, do they? They're no. They are focused on making sports vehicles, yes. high performance. Sports so we've got performance. It's a bit quick, the badge. And of course, the subject at hand is the shape of the car, isn't it? As an SUV. Yeah, it's a fantastic looking car. Oh, it's beautiful. It? Absolutely stunning. It, 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 I, I, I walked around it a few times enjoying what I was seeing. Um, 
But yes, yeah, there's three considerations. The performance, the badge, the shape. The rarity. Yeah, I, I was going to use the exclusivity. Uh, same thing. Um, they're factors as well. They're all factors, aren't mm. they? They're all and, important factors. And, and other and obvious SUVs you've mentioned, obviously Ferrari. Yeah, one of our club members is taking delivery of one of the first uh, Ferrari Purisage. <laughs> we, <laughs> we should have looked this up, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Google in, that. Yeah. yeah, in the in the UK. So yeah, so I, wow. I think they are. Has a single one been delivered in the UK? I, I don't know. It's very. As we're recording this, they, they, they are hot off the press. That's yeah. for sure. So yeah, I mean that's a that's a V twelve. It's you know it it's a incredible looking yeah. vehicle. Yeah. I mean it really looks special. Yeah. So we've got Lotus, Ferrari, obviously Lamborghini, Aston Martin. Again, these are all on the list. They are already on the that's list. Yeah. You set the precedent in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, well, I guess what where it came about was, but when we first drew up a list, there weren't super no. SUVs. No. So... Way back in 2015. Mm. So, you know, under Ferrari, it said all models. And yeah. under Lamborghini, it said all, all models. All models, yeah. Yeah. And now they've brought out an SUV. Is it all models except the SUV? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think I think for the time being, these cars are still very special. Have you ever been in a Lamborghini Urus? No. I kicked the, no, I didn't kick the tyres one. I've been close to one. That means I've kicked the tyres. <laughs> Sounds awful. Um, I've never sat in one I've been for a while. Oh, right. Have yes, no, I, was, yes yeah. I have been in one. And... Um, uh, I was given a lift by a club member in their Urus, and nice. I guess. Bef I mean, they're they're a, they're a cool looking car, but oh. I was thinking, oh well, you know, presumably it's it, it's just an Audi Q8, isn't it? Careful, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, with with Lamborghini badges, but I was shocked actually. I mean, from yeah. the moment that the the engine fired up, and oh, the, you... the way that the I've been in a lot of Lamborghinis and the interior is instantly recognisable yes. as Lamborghini. Yes. Um, the way it sounds and actually the way it drives. Yeah. I haven't driven one, You'd but I've been a passenger. Yeah. yeah, it is fascinating. Isn't it? They are They are a very special car and they shouldn't be confused with a with an Audi Q8. Stop it. Now, honestly, you've lost a few listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Audi Q8 is an amazing car. It don't get me indeed. wrong. But, it is. Um, it is. you know, is it? I mean, I don't know how much the difference between the top of the range Audi and the Lamborghini is I imagine there's a reasonable price jump but no doubt. I think a lot of people might think is it worth it but mm, yeah. they're different cars definitely yes. it, you know certainly when you stand next to an Audi that car has presence you know mm. it's, a, it's a big yeah. car yeah and straight away you can tell it's a distance not something to special distance, what it is um moving on to the equivalent Aston Martin been in one driven one yes so the Aston Martin DBX is the Aston's super SUV. Yeah. And it's on the list. Good. And it deserves to be because I've driven one of those. And again, I thought it was going to be, you know, a, su a suitable car to take the kids to school in. <laughs> yeah. uh, which it is. Which it is. Yeah. Uh, but would it really give you the rewarding drive at yeah. the weekends? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can think of one club member, um, Phil Edwards, has recently Phil, yeah. added one to his portfolio. He okay. drives a, a, a Vantage normally. Yes, yeah. yeah. And um, I don't think he's driven the Vantage since he's picked up the really? DBX. Wow. Yeah, well, just keep seeing stunning. him in the DBX. And it is, it is stunning. Yeah. Real piece of class. And, and are we missing out? Are we missing anybody else in, in, in that? The SUV top end... Um, no, I don't think we've covered them all. Obviously, Lotus is the latest. Um, yeah, I think these are the ones that come up most frequently. Yeah, yeah. But they're on the list, and, and I think quite right too, you know. Yeah, I think, some, I, think so, I think some of it is, and whilst I might not want to admit it on air, is I think it's partly the way that I feel when I see a car. Yeah. And if I see an Aston Martin DBX... I look just as hard as if I'd seen a McLaren. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, look, there's a DBX. Yeah. Because they're rare. They're great looking car. Yeah. And, and you it's can, an Aston Martin. 
which is, is rare is, in its own right, isn't it? Yes. And using that as an example, from all four angles, if you like, um, is it obviously an Aston? Certainly from the front, of course it is, with the, the grille. Um, but from side on, because I know some of the reviews I've read with some of these cars, there's been a little bit of criticism that at a distance with a squinty eye, you could mistake it for something else. Maybe. It's out of all those four, I think it's one of the more conservative looking yes. super SUVs. <laughs> but I think that suits Aston, doesn't it? I think part of their brand history is yeah. is more focused around class than wow. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I certainly when I stood next to the Aston Martin and Lamborghini, it, it, it was obviously quite a different. It felt different. If you're talking about touchy feely stuff, there was less presence there. But that doesn't take anything away from what the car is, what the brand is. But the Auris is right in your face, isn't it? From all angles, no less with its size and the you know, the design and that sort of thing as well. It says a lot about the owner as well. I think. Yeah. Well, again, that's something we could probably talk a whole other podcast about is who picks what car and yeah. why from a point of view, personality and that sort of thing. But just maybe finishing off on the SUV thing, of course, there was another mark we just mentioned there. I wonder whether they're up to the same sort of thing. McLaren, who knows? What, whether they're creating an SUV? Yeah, yeah. I doubt it for my limited knowledge of the company and the car, the cars they make, but... Well, they they went through a period of being renowned for making maybe too many new cars. Every, yes. Every other month, a new yeah. model was being yeah. released, wasn't it? So, uh, on the basis that, from a business point of view, I think the SUV market is is growing. Yes, whether it's not saturated because at all. It's yeah. too early for that, yes. for sure. Yeah. But I think people generally like to be running around in a higher up car. Yeah. to get from here to there in luxury and yeah. driving across continents. Yeah. Well, watch this space. Yeah, say. let's see if McLaren But no, I think that's, that's that on. topic covered. It's interesting, isn't it? Again, just back in the day, it was any type of the above, but as time went on, they've, they've created their own versions of an SUV. Mm. Should we talk about EVs? Again, we again we touched on it last time for all the right reasons. Um is it the future? I mean, there's some controversy around whether or not yes. electric cars actually have that long-term future. Long -term future. Yeah. Interesting. But we are where we are. We where have we are before. today, that yes. is what governments and car makers are pushing, Yeah. which must surely say a lot, mustn't it? Yeah. I know they're working on synthetic fuels. Yes. And I know they're working on hydrogen. Hydrogen, yeah. Yeah. Um, Personally, I think the synthetic fuels is really just going to cater for people with, you know, let's fast forward 10 years. You know, mm. people are going to be looking back at the combustion engine, mm. internal combustion, as, you know, historic. Yeah. And mm -hmm. those cars will need some fuel to keep, keep them on the road. So not. synthetic fuel might be their only option. Tick the box. Is it going to be mass produced so that the internal combustion engine lingers a bit longer i don't think so i think i think yeah. Yeah. when you look at any other tech in any other world you need to reduce the amount of moving parts yes yes and when you think how many moving parts there are in a com in combustion engine it's there's a, there's a lot it, going on uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, yeah whereas a motorized vehicle is is tiny in comparison isn't it yeah it's strange but look just just maybe back without backtracking too much Quick bit of the history of EVs on the qualifying mm. list. Yeah. When did that come about? What was the first one that went on there? Where are we up to? The first one on the list, people might be surprised to hear, was a Tesla. Now, I don't mean... <laughs> I don't mean your regular Tesla. No. This was the original Tesla Roadster. Ah, yes. Yeah. And um, one of our club members had one early on. Yeah. And has subsequently had multiple. Um, so they look at uh, Do you know the car? Yes, but note my hesitation. <laughs> it looks a little bit like a Lotus. Yes, I, I think do. Lotus I helped do. make do. it, to be fair. I think the body oh, okay. is Lotus. Um, but fully electric and um, a flying machine. Yeah. And really, a glimpse. It was a. It was the first glimpse of the future. It was the first sports EV. 
Yeah, so that's the first one. When was that? A couple of years ago, three years ago, four years ago? When did that go on the list? Uh, to be honest, it probably went on the list when that particular club member joined, and I think that was probably about 2019. I think it was that wow. initial surge of interest. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've added the Lotus Electra in recent times. Mm -hmm. um, Porsche were the sort of first uh, well-known yeah. um, classic sports car manufacturer to really sink a lot of effort into it, mm. um, producing the, the Taycan. Of course, yeah. Great car. Um, and they were first to market. And to be honest, they produced an amazing car. Mm. Yeah. It's a big, heavy car. And um, as you know, I, I drive one now. Yeah. And my expectations of that car was that it looked fantastic. It had the Porsche quality. Yeah. It was going to be an absolute flying machine in a straight line, but it wasn't going to be a sports car because it's it's two it's about two and a half tons. Yeah. So that's yes. right, to put that in perspective, that's about the same weight as a full size Range Rover. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the question is, straight line doesn't hang about, but how does it go around corners? <laughs> you know. I was absolutely yeah. astounded yeah. at how well it went around corners. Yeah. The, the story goes that Porsche weren't going to release it until it handled like a 911. Yes. I was thinking, well, how, how, how can they do that? Yeah. But they've put the batteries so low in the car, mm. which means that the, the center of gravity, so I understand, is is better than a 911 GT3. Goodness me. Okay. That's so, an achievement. In the grand yeah. Of and, and actually, I think the, the extra weight gives you a lot of organic downforce at low speeds that you don't get in other cars. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Really so interesting. It's, it's... Yeah. And you've got to... There's, obviously, there's a lot of people that are anti-EVs. Mm. And I think a lot of these people haven't driven a Porsche Taycan. Yeah. It's my only comment because, I, you know, and if there's anyone out there that's a club member that wants to drive mine, you you know... Give me a shout. That's me looking Collins. for the keys. Where's the yeah, key? Is that Collins. your key? No, it's my key. <laughs> Damn. Okay, you keep talking, Greg. I'll be back in about yeah, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Hopefully with, with the car, car intact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Walking up the road. That was lovely, that. It's in a bush, in a ditch. Um, yeah, it's, uh, EVs. I know uh, there was another club member, Andy Brooker. Are you listening, Andy? He said to me, don't you think that EV cars really have lost that soul? Hmm. We're getting to the touchy feely stuff. Yeah, again. quite right. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? What do you think? You um, drive an electric car, don't you? As, I as do. A daily. Yeah, at the moment I've got a dual motor Polestar Two, which doesn't hang about. As it, it, I've it, seen this evening. Yeah, shh, keep it quiet. Um, oh, no within, speed limits were broken yes, before in the private of roads. Um, but certainly with that car, and it's no comparison to yours. But it's all I've got in in that respect is um, going around corners is a bit... <laughs> yes, it's, of course, it's got the low centre of gravity as yes, they, car, they the have, batteries are low down. Um, the Polestar is really aimed at the luxury car market, isn't it? Yeah, so it's certainly not the, a cheap car. Uh, well, no, what I mean is, it, you know, all of these things, there's a, there's a trade-off, isn't it? You either focus on it being luxurious... Yes. ...and, unfortunately, it doesn't have very good handling, or you have very good handling... And it's not quite as comfortable. Yeah. So they, I think, you know, to be fair to yeah. Polestar, they've been creating a luxury, comfortable car. They, yeah. they haven't created a sports car there, have they? Although I think, are they? Am I right in thinking they are making a? They are. Sports there's, car? there's, there's other Polestars coming. I'm not, not too clued up on it. But of course, before the Polestar two, there's a Polestar one, and that was a bit sporty. I mean, it wasn't just an EV; it was petrol and it was hybrid. hybrid. I think, yeah. Um, I was going to ask whether that's on the list. But yeah, it, it, it isn't at the minute. Yeah. Well, again, there's not many around. So. Anyway. But yeah, just just little comparison. Right, there's not many to... around. That's, that's a great no, reason to be on the list. Absolutely. Well, let's talk um, about that later. Yeah, yeah. But no, it, it's been a great daily for me. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I once sat in the back and never again. It wasn't that comfortable. Things considered. But oh, I mean, right. Sucks. Interesting. Yeah. Polestar, are you listening? Yeah, yeah. So some work to do on the... <laughs> On the back seat and <laughs> comfort levels. Anyway, let, let's get sort of back on track with EVs and, and, and the list. 
So obviously your car's on there, one or two others. But again, from a point of view of adapting or adding to the list, you mentioned earlier on, is that ultimately often driven by a member saying, hey, Greg, I'm going to buy this car. <laughs> you know, I can't see it on the list, but would it qualify? Yes, there, there is. People do come to me with cars. Will, will you accept this car? Yeah. And, um, I, you know, sometimes it, it unfortunately, the answer is it, it doesn't quite meet the criteria. And, yeah. yeah. Um, I have to be strong on that because I think that's a really important part of the club is to is to keep the quality and the the feeling of the club mm. at a, you know a supremely high level yes yes no, to no. make it you know to keep it special yeah there's lots of clubs out there and not all of them are uh, as demanding um yeah. but is that is it a good thing or is it a bad thing that we're demanding well the, the, the bar's got to be set somewhere and you're the founder of the club so i think you get first refusal as they say on where the bar is and and you know certainly from when we've talked about this in the past it is not without a whole load of consideration and thought on your part i mean i think a couple of examples earlier on it may give the impression yeah that's not on the list that's not you and who you are you know without doubt you will think it through i, I don't want with to others. ever turn a car away i don't want no. to no so actually that's the starting point yeah is if someone's passionate about their car i'm automatically trying to find a reason why yeah that should be the case yeah but notwithstanding making sure that it really is in keeping with what we're trying to create yeah and I, and it's not just down to me either i i no. i tend to put it out to 20 or 30 club members yeah um yeah. if i'm thinking does it work should it be in it yeah uh if i can't decide i you know i, I will put it to yeah which is good. A few more people to, to make the decision. Then if you get challenged, yeah, it wasn't my fault. It's just me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I usually use your name, Colin. To be honest, oh, you wouldn't for be the first. ones that say you know that the answer is no. I say unfortunately, Colin says no. Yeah, which is weird because I wasn't asked in the first instance. But the answer you don't get asked. Then. You just no. get no. used as the scapegoat. Thank you for sharing that. That's nice. Don't you understand. like stand. Yeah, and presumably you'd like to feel needed. Uh, yeah, uh, or not. The case may be depending on what the subject is. So yeah, EVs. It's important we cover that because again, it's a future. It's a, I think you find that you know that all of the manufacturers are going to be bringing out yeah. EVs. So, yeah. you know, at what point? I think some people will be thinking you shouldn't be allowing EVs, but at some point there wouldn't be any new qualifying cars. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because certainly with electric vehicles, without doubt, for a lot of them, the performance, there, the speed is there. You know, even with. Performance is not is definitely not a, a problem for an electric car, is it? No, no. And you can't compete with the performance of an electric car when you compare it with old school combustion engine. If you like, no, not going to match it. no. So it's, it's no way. longer really, and, and and it wasn't even when we were talking about internal combustion engine cars. It's not just about performance. No, no. You know, you drive a like I did a nineteen eighties Ferrari. It's got. 200 horsepower 200, yeah, I think yeah. it had 240 yeah. horsepower it's nothing wow. you know a mini would probably yeah. have that now wouldn't it yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not it's not really about the performance it's about the car the history yes the styling the the type of car that it, the car appeals to yeah. so I think you know, from what you've just said there there's an element of a checklist to go through of obvious things but also there's a there's there are other considerations which are more the brand, the feeling, where the car sits in the world of sports cars and, and supercars as well. That's probably a, an element of a factor that's also included as well. What yeah. the car is. Yeah, I think we were saying earlier, but you know, down the pub, I was, I was saying that I think it's about the f feeling that that car gives when you, when you see it and when you recognise yes. which manufacturer it's come from. That's a very good There's point. a feeling... You know, it's not it's not data. It's not zeros and ones. It's a no. It's an emotional mm. decision. Well, whether it's comparison again, if it's a car on the list, like all of us, there's a, you know, we have our own little journeys to choose that car. That's you know, right. Certainly That's for right. me, I went through two or three different options and choices, and and uh, for those who know me, I've got an AMG GT. It's the entry level version. It's a wonderful. It's a great car. I absolutely love it. 
Um, and without going into that, maybe that's we, for another time. But just quickly, just to confirm that your car was designed from the ground up as a sports car. Yes. There's no four door. There's no, no. one point eight version. No. It is purely a sports car from design. Yes. And you can only get a sports car version of it. Yes. Because with Mercedes, it you know it 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 does start muddying the waters because there there are a lot of Mercedes that you know in fact the vast majority of Mercedes mm. are not qualifying cars. No. Yeah. So why is yours on the list? Because it's an AMG. It's, <laughs> well, yeah, but you can get a A class AMG. Ah, well, the reason to say that is there are some owners of the car I have that if you call it Mercedes, they get a bit offended. It's an AMG. Oh, but I yeah. see. Yeah. What what you're saying that really the the car is an AMG, not a Mercedes. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you, you what, does like. what does it say on the bonnet? What does it say on the bonnet? Yeah, I, I, nothing on the bonnet, but it's on the grill. You're right. Oh, is it's it got on the grill? A massive Mercedes badge on the front. Um, I read that somewhere once when I was doing all my homework and research, which was a wonderful journey, and I'm sure everybody's the same when you're thinking, I want to buy a nice car. Um, when I decided AMG GT, didn't say Mercedes, um, you do a lot of homework, a lot of research, a lot of YouTube clips to figure it out yes and i just wrote it just stuck in my mind where one of the reviewers said yeah no no most owners apparently don't call a mercedes it's an AMG. we've got a bit of off kilter here off off, off east no but it, no, um, but it is it's it is interesting isn't it it's interesting and, and 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 your car is a great example where it's from a manufacturer that probably does i mean their core business is regular cars i mean yeah. high-end regular cars yeah you know, they're premium executive yeah, they're regular okay. cars, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. Um, but then they brought out a dedicated yeah. sports car. And that's why your car is on the list. Yeah. yeah. Um, it Because it, it was it was designed to be a sports car, yeah. not not a standard car, but with a big engine. It, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's what differentiates yours, for example, for, say, I don't know, an E-Class mm -hmm. AMG. I, I dare say they may even share the en same engine, don't they? What the the E Class AMG yes. V8? Oh yeah, oh absolutely. The it's engine the of same my engine. car is in one or two, including the old Aston Martin. If you want to move. Oh okay, <laughs> so, yeah. yes, that's but, very yeah, true. Yeah, good point. So, anyway, yeah. So that's that's why your car is on the list. Yeah, yeah. But say an A Class AMG yeah. is not. Isn't. Yeah. Do you think that Quite I've right. explained that? I in a way that people understand why well. yeah. no, you've one is it. on there, one is not. <laughs> yeah, just stop calling it a Mercedes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, fine. Um, so we, we, were, we were covering EVs there and went uh, off, off on where, a tangent how, a little bit. Where did we, why did we go on to your company? Absolutely no idea. Right. Because of that we'll have to rewind and have a listen. Yeah, it might all make sense. I think it's bound EV. not to. Well, we, we were covering EVs and then looking at the future. And obviously the future is... More EVs on the list, whether we like it or whether you like it or not. And anything else that is an obvious qualifying car uh, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, what will be the first hydrogen car? Ooh. Will there be one? Ooh, ooh, will ooh. they actually make a car? Will they get the technology yeah. good enough? Do we know who's leading that 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 um, technology at the moment? I, I think Porsche. Really? So, I mean, I don't know whether it is. Porsche yeah. or whether it's because they're part of the AG on they are again I am <laughs> I don't know I don't know but I think Porsche have been recorded as sinking 100 million or oh, maybe well, more than that the rest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think they are exploring it and maybe BMW I think may have oh, I'm sure as well. all the big manufacturers are have their toe in that development pond in the grand scheme of things as they should they've got they've got no choice have they you know if that's yeah, it's only from a research and, and development point. Well, of the view. other thing is, I mean, it, you know, water is the most abundant uh, yeah. fluid on the earth. So it would be great if we could harness it, wouldn't it? It'd be useful. Look, I think we've covered all the things we wanted to on this this session. Hopefully, everybody's found that rather interesting. I think it is. Yeah, a lot of it's opinions, isn't it? And I, I, there's no doubt that everyone listening will have a very slightly different opinion, yeah. or or you know. 
significantly different opinion to us. Yeah. And it's not that there is, you know, a lot of these things, there's no right or wrong, is there? Is no, no. And as you said, you know, it's not all down to ground. You consult and get uh, feedback, uh, and, and that's, that's good, you know, to get the balanced approach. But it is obviously a key aspect of the club when it comes yes. to what's in and what's out. And, and, and it's, it's hard like, turning yes. people's pride and joys away. Um, and <sighs> I do get take, it. I, yeah. do, I do get it. You know, people, it doesn't matter what your budget is. If you're into cars and you buy a car and you love it, you're passionate and you don't want to hear that it doesn't qualify do you and no. um no. you know it, it's hard it's hard for us as, as, as the team to turn cars away we're not looking to, <laughs> we've turned you away it's not it's the opposite no. to that no it, 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 again it, 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 it's got to be right for the club um to keep the club who it is and what it's it harder is. yeah it's harder for us to say no than it is yes and we have to push ourselves to say no yeah. to keep that quality not yeah. quantity level going yeah yeah absolutely. look greg should we call it a day on that that's interesting I no think. no let's go for, let's go for another hour no, we're only okay, in, go on. We're, we're on minute 38 although i suspect the uh, listeners won't get all 38 minutes we will we will delicately and sensitively cut that down uh, to five cut that down about <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the cuts call it 10 minutes is the deal yeah yeah um, that that will be the net content of the good stuff yeah and then we'll just cut the rest you speak for yourself I think it was all good. But look, let, let's let's call it a day on this one. Um, you know, from the first one we did, as I mentioned earlier on, it did get very positive feedback. So we're having another go. And um, between us, we've come up with a list of other topics and areas we think we can chat about. So, uh, yeah, yes, um, and hopefully um, you'll speak to a, a few more people as well. And yeah, maybe if there's not? anybody in the club that... Fancies talking to Colin about a, yeah, a, we can a pack subject. a few more in here. Come on, yeah. <laughs> get a party. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Look, that's a really good point, isn't it? Well, look, thank you, Greg. What time is it again in our world? Oh, it's not too bad this time. Right? Yeah, we've done better this time, haven't we? We, we must have been now. really talking last time before no. we started. Um, yes, good. Okay, well, thank you, Colin. Thanks for hey, for thank giving you. up your evening. No, no, no. It's been a good chat, and here's to next time. Cheers, Colin. See you then. See you later.